Looking after your bike is going to save you money in the long run. Now, how far you want to go with bicycle maintenance is really up to you and the abilities you want to take on. But with these eight groups of tools here that I have, you can do well over 33 different maintenance jobs. That's pretty much everything you're ever going to need to do. So let's talk about them. Now, I'm basing this selection of tools on the fact that you might be likely to have something like these floating around at home in your generic toolkit, or perhaps your mum, your dad, or someone else in your family might. So, a pair of pliers, always useful on a bike. Needle nose pliers, especially useful for gear cables and things like that. It's not a bike specific tool, but quite likely to have one of those floating around the house. And a flat and a Phillips or crosshead style screwdriver. We're all surely likely to have these floating around at home if you have and you add these other tools to it, you can do all of these jobs, no problem. First things first, let's start with the tool that we all absolutely must have. We all have tires that need pumping up, therefore you're gonna need a pump. Now, depending on your budget and how you wanna do this, you might be able to afford to have a couple of pumps, a small one for the trails and a bigger one for home that's better for using all the time. But if you can only have one pump, then I'd recommend getting a quality mini pump. Now this has a double action, which means it inflates in both directions. And actually, it's surprisingly little work to get a fairly big tire inflated. A little bit more persistence required than a floor standing pump, but the point is you don't need anything else and it can go with you when you go riding. So a mini pump can be your best friend. Now, a lot of people might be tempted by many budget offerings as far as floor standing pumps go on the market. There's lots of supermarkets that sell them for you know as little as $10 or 10 quid here in the UK. But quite often, they're made of non-recyclable plastics and they're pretty flimsy, if I'm honest. My advice would be buy one of these and then save up and get a decent floor standing pump. Now, when it comes to a floor standing pump, you really want to buy once and not have to buy for a very long time. Now, my first ever pump was an SKS pump. It was made, it had a cast iron base on it. I got it when I was 14 years old from the bike shop I was doing work experience at. And I had that pump for about 20 years. So it certainly paid for itself. These days I have one of these, this isn't my one. Um, I bought mine before I worked here at GMBN and it's an absolutely rock solid pump. The benefit of this one in particular for mountain bikers is it has a compression chamber, which means you can inflate tubeless tires with a twist of a dial. When it comes to pumps, in fact, when it comes to any tools, buy once is always the best approach. If you can't afford to buy it straight away, don't be too tempted by very cheap tools because only a rich man's gonna buy cheap tools. Okay, so let's look at a few of the jobs that you can do with a pump. You can pump your tires up. You can experiment with tire pressure, which means exploring the realms of traction. You can set up tubeless. You can fix a puncture. You could even, if you really wanted to, pump up a football or anything like that. Allen keys. Now, I'm gonna class Allen keys as a single tool because of the fact they are absolutely essential to work on a mountain bike. Virtually everything on there is an Allen key of some kind. Now, it's up to you how you wanna do this. You can have a set of Allen keys, which is very beneficial for working on your bike. Like workshop spec Allen keys like this are expensive, but you don't necessarily need to go this far. However, you're always gonna get the best results with the best tool. If you wanna save a bit of cash for a set of Allen keys, a multi-tool, such as something like this, the quality of the tools on here are absolutely fantastic. And it's actually a tool that I favor myself at home in combination with an eight millimeter Allen key, which even if you had one on a multi-tool is never gonna be that usable because you need, you need the length in it. So there's beneficial ways of saving cash and getting good Allen keys. Now, something that's actually really important with Allen keys is always get the best ones that you can afford because of the fact that quality Allen keys will be made from really good quality hardened steel and they're gonna stay sharp, which means you won't be rounding out the heads of the bolts. If you buy cheap Allen keys quite often, after some time, particularly with popular Allen keys like the four millimeter or a five, you'll find the edges of them start deteriorating and that's when you start rounding out the heads of the bolts on your bike. So just be warned, if you're choosing budget options, just make sure you keep an eye on them so you don't damage the heads on there. The other thing you're gonna need in addition to Allen keys is a Torx T25. Now, you could buy a single Torx T25 to do your disc rotor bolts on your bike or if you've got a SRAM for doing the controls on the brake levers there or you could be crafty. And there's another way you can do this. So this little fella is a T25 and it's a T10 on the other end. And that comes when you have a set of SRAM brakes. It comes with the bike, if your bike has SRAM brakes on there for looking after the SRAM brakes and bleeding them. Yes, it will get the job done. 
You don't really want to be doing up disc rotor bolts for this. This is more of a necessity, but how often do you do that? It might be a suitable option for you. And the final option, of course, is a trail-based tool. So you're gonna to need to have some tools for using at home, in your workshop, your garden, wherever you look after your bike, and some tools for using out on a trail. Now, of course, a multi-tool like this is the best option for taking with you because it's your MacGyver of tools. It means you can fix most things you have to, but they're not very easy to use at home. So you've got options here. You can have a full set of Allen keys and you can have a multi-tool, quite expensive way of doing it. You could have a multi-tool and that big eight mil key. And when you go out on the trails, you're free to take that with you. It is missing a few keys, but it's very useful to have at both home and away. Of course, you pick a multi-tool and just get on with it. Now, when you pick a multi-tool, there's a bunch of things you're gonna need to have on here. Now, this one does have an eight millimeter Allen key on it, for example, but don't expect to be able to use this to tighten your cranks. If your cranks come loose, that's what you need to get you home. You'll still need to tighten it properly with a proper heavy duty Allen key when you get there. If you're gonna to commit to spending a bit of cash on a multi-tool, make sure it has a chain splitter on there. That's one of the tools you'll use the least on a bike, but when you do need to do it, there is nothing else. So if you have that chain splitter, it means you can replace a chain on your bike at home. You don't need a full size chain tool because of the fact that you're not a bike shop, you're not gonna be doing several of those a day. You might be doing one of those a year, it might be every few months, in which case that is all you need and you've got the benefit of all those tools for fixing your bike out on the trail. Now let's be clear about this. You can do virtually anything on a bike. So with Allen keys, here's a bunch of the things you can do. This isn't even scratching the surface mind, it's just a few of them. Adjusting your gear limit screws and the B tension, a tight and frame hardware and shock mounts, adjust your headset, fit bars, fit a stem, fit a seat post, fit a saddle, fit cranks, fit pedals, brakes, wheels, the list goes on. The amount of things you can fit onto your bike using Allen keys. You can secure your bars and stem. You can adjust your brake calipers if the brake pads are rubbing. You can tighten disc rotors. You can tighten spoke nipples. If you've got a multi-tool like this that has a spoke key on there, you can adjust your saddle position. You can align chain guides with it. You can service your pedals. You can fit a fork to your bike. You can adjust handlebar controls. You can adjust your brake lever reach and you can even fit a new chain. A chain wear indicator tool. Yeah, okay, so this is only good for one job on the bike, and that is, uh, well, it's saving you cash, really, by seeing if your chain is worn out. Now, why exactly do you need to do this? Surely you just run your chain until it's knackered, and then you replace it, right? Not really, because the fact, as your chain wears, there's a phenomenon known as chain stretch. That's not the metal plates of the chain physically stretching. What happens is the pitch of the chain, so that's the distance between the pins, it gets very slightly longer as the components like the rollers wear out on the inside. When everything just shifts microscopically along the line, you know, we're talking like, you know, half a mil or something like that, it's a crazy amount. But as everything shifts along, those rollers no longer sit in the right place on your chain ring and on your rear sprockets. And as a result, they're gonna get worn out much faster than if you replace the chain more frequently. So by replacing the chain before it's worn out, you'll keep going on that same cassette and that same chain ring far longer. Otherwise, you'll be having to replace all three components every time. Cable cutters. So replacing your gear cable from time to time, uh, annually, or even as much as every few months if you ride in diabolical conditions, really does transform the way your gear shift. And if you're using brakes that have brake cables on the inside, like steel inner cables, you'll know the same thing from those. It's a systematic thing you're gonna to have to do from time to time. You may as well make this a skill that you can do at home because it will cost you money uh, with what is actually a fairly basic skill that you can learn at home. So get yourself a set of cable cutters, buy a decent pair of these, and never use them for anything except cutting that steel inner cable and trimming down the outer housing. If you use them just for that, they will stay sharp the entire time you have them. Now, something to look for on a set of cable cutters, other than the obvious cable cutting jaws on them, is a secondary set of jaws. So these ones, as you see, have two indents on them. The top one is for crimping a little metal end cap over that inner cable, which means the inner cable is never gonna fray, meaning it will take a lot longer before you have to replace it again. And the bigger one here is for basically making sure the outer housing and the ferrules are all nice and in the right shape after you've cut them. So a very versatile tool for a single job, but actually a job that we all have to do a lot of times over your bike's lifetime. So it will save you cash if you get a set of these because you don't have to go to the bike shop every time you need to get your cables changed. Next up is going a little bit deeper into home maintenance, and that is a chain whip. 
and the relevant cassette tool to fit your bike. Now you might look at these and think, wow, that's like a pretty specialist tool that you literally only use for a single job, but some tools you only do use them for a single job. Now chances are, if you buy a cassette from a bike shop, yep, they will probably help you out. They may well fit the cassette on there for free because it really is a fast job. But also the fact is this is something super speedy that you can do at home, which means you're not free to, uh, you don't have to go to bike shops all the time. You could order stuff online and you could do this job yourself. If you're going as far as checking the chain to see if it's worn, hey, the next step is to replace the cassette yourself as well. But in addition to replacing a cassette when they're worn out, it also means you can have access to your rear hub anytime you want for a number of things. You might learn how to replace a spoke if you break a spoke. You might have to service your rear hub because your bearings are knackered. These are all things you can do at home, but you do need a tool like this because you're not gonna get access to the hub otherwise. Now, when it comes to selecting the cassette tool to use, make sure you have a think about this because some of the more recent editions like this one sit inside your through axle, so it basically can't slip. So actually, that's a really, really good tool to use. This one has the same concept to sit inside a quick release hub. However, I would still recommend getting one of these. If you can only get one, the more traditional one doesn't have either of these on the inside there. Because of the fact, if you've got RockShox forks, you can now use that to remove the top cap on the RockShox fork there to get access to the air chamber. So you can change your air volume spaces with that tool as well. You can't do that with those ones. So if you can only have one, that's the one to get. A bleed kit for your hydraulic disc brakes. Now, if you have hydraulic disc brakes on your bike, from time to time, you're going to need to bleed them and perform some maintenance on them. Now, some people get freaked out by this, but honestly, it's fairly, it's fairly simple, really. It's an easy process. It's just systematic following a number of steps, but you will need the right kit. There's a few ways you can do this. Get the official kit that suits your brakes. For example, the SRAM bleed kit to go with SRAM brakes or the Shimano setup to go with their brakes. But there's loads of aftermarket ones as well. Park Tools make a kit to suit mineral brakes that has a number of different fitments. So it might fit Magura brakes or TRP or Shimano's. Or there's other companies like Epic Bleed Solutions that offer budget kits that fit all different brands as well. Now, whatever you pick, just make sure you've got the right ones and the right oil for your brakes. And that means you can look after your brakes anytime and even your friend's brakes too. And last, but definitely not least, are a set of quality tire levers. Now, don't ever be tempted to get metal tire levers on your mountain bike. It's very easy to slice or split a tire and even easier to damage the rims on your bike as well. So just scrap that idea completely. Get yourself some plastic or nylon shaped tire levers. Get yourself three because one is gonna be enough for most jobs, two you're gonna need on some of the heavier duty tires, and let's face it, you're gonna lose one. So make it three so you're sorted for that. Now, some tire levers actually, are worth looking at like these ones from Topeak. They're actually clipped together and they make a quick link splitter. So you can actually split a chain with these. And even better than that, on the back of them, they've got a third hand tool for holding that chain and you can store on there one of those quick links or a power link depending on what chain you have. Again, they're still tire levers, really useful to use on a bike as tire levers, but they're an additional tool. So this is a way that you can slim line down the amount of tools that you have or need to spend money on, which is a really cool thing to do. And let's face it, being able to split a chain and do a number of things with a simple tool is pretty handy. So, tire levers. What can you do with tire levers? You can obviously change a tire, you can install a tire, you can apparently split a chain, and you can rejoin a chain with that. But there's also one more useful thing you can do with tire levers, and that is, uh, well, opening your uh, favorite bottle of beer. Okay, so that's 33 mechanical jobs that you can do with these tools, uh, eight groups of tools there. Uh, in fact, there's probably nearer 50 jobs that you can do with all these things here. Uh, so it just goes to show, get yourself some quality tools, tools that are gonna last, and you're gonna be able to look after your bike for a very long time, keeping it in great shape. Now, don't forget, we have got loads of maintenance videos on this channel that can help you look after your bike. If there's anything we haven't made uh, that's gonna help you look after your bike or a very particular job, please let us know in those comments and we'll have a look and we'll see about making that video. Uh, thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you in the next one. See you later.